Hello, my beautiful friends, my fellow space blobs, earth blobs, sparkly blobs, or if you don't feel like a blob, whatever form you are feeling like right now, however you want to describe yourself, whatever beautiful words, ideas just feel like you, I'm here for it. Like, let's have fun playing with those things. That's what this space is all about. It's about getting in touch with our truer and our dreamers, getting in touch with our unique creative voices, getting back in touch with our intuition, and not trying to live a cookie cutter life that feels empty and void of meaning, especially in the world as it is right now. It's quite intense. Hence, we really need spaces where people feel like they can just relax and take an exhale. And I hope that today's exploration of the Taurus new moon will be that for all of us. I feel so happy (laughs) thinking about this Taurus new moon. I really need it personally. I think I've mentioned it a few times at this point, if you've been following along the last few weeks, that Airy season, eclipse season was just really rough on me. I was basically sick the whole time and just incorporating a lot of ideas and thoughts and feeling a lot of big emotions. It was just a very impactful eclipse season for me. I'm still kind of sorting out the pieces of what all of that meant. And so landing into this really dreamy, soft, loving Taurus new moon energetic, which is very harmonious very supportive, curious about how we're dreaming, I think just feels about as good as it can get. I think at least two or three times a year, we normally have a few of these moons that really offer just a bit of harmonious, peaceful introspection, and we need those. And in the course of a year, while we are doing some deep excavating, we also need times of feeling just the beauty of creation and dreaming to work alongside that deep digging. And that's exactly what this new moon is all about. It's a follow up new moon after that Scorpio full moon where we were doing some deep digging and thinking about how we're changing and our relationship to change. And is it uncomfortable? Are we feeling allowed to change? Are we breaking rules with the way we're changing? So with this new moon, we're going to be exploring our dreaming selves and how that feels in our body. So get your tea, get your journal and, and relax, whatever you like to do while you're sitting here with me and we're exploring these themes and let's get into some of the energetics of this beautiful new moon in Taurus happening May 7th into the 8th. So probably the central element to this new moon is that we are working with a stellium of energy in Taurus. So we have the sun and the moon at 18 degrees of Taurus, but we also have Venus, Jupiter, and Uranus all hanging around. They're not super close to the new moon, but they're all there surrounding this new moon in the sign of Taurus. So we have pretty big group of energies working together during this new moon. And that really amplifies what I think of as the core of Taurus's energetics. For me, Taurus is about building a foundation of deep trust and safety in our dreaming and creative selves. It's a cornerstone of anything else we want to do in our lives. When we check in with this place, when we take the time to really look at the foundation of how we believe we're allowed to create or dream or envision or play we are helping all the other aspects of our lives, including those times that aren't about dreaming and playing that are about tough questions and figuring out what's the right path for ourselves, all of that. But this is a really foundational energetic to work with when we have a stellium in Taurus like this. And I know it sounds cheesy. And I think it even feels a little bit disallowed in the version of the world that we're living in right now, which does have so much heartache going on. And that feels quite a bit fractured. And there's just big, there's big things happening where we're having to face like, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be in a culture and community and all of these things? Like I am very aware of those, these things are happening. And so I think it's really interesting though. The question being like, are you still allowed to dream? Are you still allowed to find soft spaces to dream by dreaming and imagining and creating and giving ourselves that permission? Something is happening though. And I think it's something that, you know, the kind of, messaging we receive throughout our lives is that this is selfish. This is lazy. This won't change anything. This won't do anything. But any meaningful thing that's been created in life started from the position of imagination and dreaming. It didn't start from somebody just 
randomly walking along and having no vision whatsoever, no, nothing that connected them to their inner dreamer. It's the people who gave themselves that gift. And I realized too, that many people feel like they aren't allowed to enter into this inner dreamer because they are being worked too hard because they don't have the peace and quiet to access it. I honor that so deeply. And I also think if you have a little bit of space and time to do that inner dreaming, then please just give yourself that. Um, the most important element of this new moon is that it's about dreaming like you. And I say this often, but I think it's really fascinating. A lot of times we will have secret rules about the way we dream and the way we imagine and the way that we daydream. And we may not even catch it all the time because it feels like ourselves and it feels like what you should want to be dreaming of. But I challenge each of us, including myself for sure, during this Taurus new moon to play around with dreaming like yourself. And that means that you're going to have to let the weird into your dreams. Like if you're really dreaming like yourself, I guarantee you some of the things that you fantasize about doing or experiencing in the day to day is going to be kind of funny. It might even feel like something that you wouldn't want to tell, you know, your friends is like you really want to do or your family. It may be something that, you know, feels like a little bit of something that you would just do in the privacy of your own home, you know, like a certain way of snacking or a certain amount of personal space. Um, and it's like, it just might be kind of a little bit strange. You know, it might be something that doesn't fit a nice, tidy script for what a meaningful life looks like. It may be surprising to you. It may feel like it doesn't totally make sense or it doesn't have like a nice linear solution to it. I think that's how I can tell when I'm really dreaming like myself, when really funny little details start to come in that just really like, what are you supposed to do with that? Um, that's when I know I'm starting to really get in touch with my true inner dreamer and not kind of more of the expected dreams that we're so inundated with as we walk through the world. Um, once those start to kind of lift off and I'm in my inner dreamer, things get really, really playful. The other part about having the stellium in Taurus that's really interesting for me, fixed signs are very interesting to work with energetically because they are about sustain stating things over long times and they're about kind of the creative process over the course of time as we experience time so some of the dreaming some of the visions some of the ideas that might be coming through during this taurus new moon could be things that will take maybe a little bit of time and i think sometimes when we're having dreams like that we sometimes disallow them because it feels like well it's too late to start dreaming about that now because I know it's going to take two or three years for it to come into my life or for me to get good at that skill or for me to even have the resources. Don't shut yourself off from dreaming of things that may involve the element of time in its process. Let yourself dream of them because a lot of the meaningful dreams we have that we really long to allow ourselves to imagine do you have that element of time in them? Do you have that element of process in them? And when we give ourselves permission to dream about those spaces, I think there's a really deep self-trust that starts to develop. I also think once again, it's that foundational energy when we are allowing ourselves to dream, knowing that we're going to be working from a foundation, that we're going to be working from a sense of spaciousness with our time and our process we're more likely to take small actions and allow ourselves to let that process unfold. So just kind of playing with that fixed earth sign energetic, it's really liberating actually, because it allows us to dream in, in various ways and feel safe doing it. The other part of this new moon that's very harmonious, so beautiful, love this conversation, is that this new moon is going to be sextiling Saturn in Pisces. And I just love this conversation so much because for me, this is a very, it's a wonderful bridge conversation between kind of the, the less, the non-physical, ethereal energetics of our intuition and our 
soulful knowing and things that are a little bit less grounded in reality, which is that Saturn and Pisces energetic, which is telling us, listen to your intuition, listen to your deep knowing with all of that grounded Taurus energy, which is saying, hey, how do you want to translate this? How do you want to create this? And one of the things that I think is really interesting about this sextile is that it's a moment to really honor what you know. I sometimes really like to sit down because I'll I'll often feel like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. It's what's going to happen. What should I do with these things over here? I don't know. When I actually have a lot of really deep knowing. And I think this sextile is a moment. And this new moon is a moment to actually take a moment to honor what you know. Honor what you intuitively know honor what you practically know as well. You have lots of little pieces of the puzzle already with you. So what are they? And can you give yourself that moment to let them arrive, to land, to work with you, to show you some things? There's one final theme and conversation that's going on in the background of this new moon, which is that Mercury and Chiron are meeting up. Now, this is their third meetup over the last couple of months because they've been meeting up regularly as Mercury has been doing its retrograde motion and coming back forward again. So they met first on March 20th. They met again on April 16th. And this is their final meetup for now on May 8th during the post shadow of Mercury retrograde. And this is a really interesting meetup. This is a really wonderful time to integrate energy from eclipse season, honestly, it's still mirroring back some of those eclipse energetics that we were working with. What, how do we take care of our wounded warrior? How do we take care of our wounded healer? How do we give those parts of ourselves that work so hard that move through the world in such intense ways, support and love so that they can allow us to dream so that we can dream together so that we can feel safe in it. So it's a really interesting little moment going on um, in the background of this new moon. I wanted to just pull a couple of cards for our conversation for this new moon and see what wants to move through. And we are still doing our journey through the major arcanas over on my Patreon. So if you are interested in a lot of deep support and just playing with archetypes, activating them, allowing them to work with you, help you chart your course to deepen your tarot practice, to feel safe in it, to feel centered in it, to feel like you can trust your intuitive guidance when working with tarot, I would love to see you there. You can catch up on all the sessions we've already had and look forward to a few more. High Priestess. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Speaking of intuition and knowing, this card is all about that. Let's pull a companion to our friend, the High Priestess. And Four of Swords. I love it too. You know, I love a good Four of Swords moment. Okay, these are about two of the most mystical cards I could ever envision showing up in a reading. I mean, I love it. It's really interesting, you know, new moons are so much about new energy and planting seeds and ideas coming through. And honestly, I just am looking forward to just doing some creative projects during this new moon and like just feeling the excitement of the energetic flow. But I also think that this is a really mu- uh, like such a new moon about kind of being between worlds, being between the non-physical and the physical and the translation process. And how do we do that? And what does that look like? And I think these cards represent a couple of different ways we can think about doing that. On the one hand, we have the high priestess here, who is, she is, she represents sitting, straddling the veil of the life and the other side and the interconnectedness of that and the deep mysteries of the creative process. And in some ways, one of the things about high priestess is that we'll never be able to fully know the mystery. Like we're not here to have solid answers with the mystery and say, this is what it is, or, you know, make it into something concrete. Part of our work with the high priestess is I think, finding deep acceptance of the mystery of creativity, the mystery of life, the mystery of what we're doing here on this earth, and some of the hard questions that come with that, but also in that deep acceptance and communing with this intuitive, wild, powerful, energetic of the high priestess, 
as we let ourselves do that, we give ourselves the space to feel safe, to dream, to create, to play, because we realize there's this bigger mystery holding it all. So just interacting with that, you know, what does life mean if we're not worried about chasing identities and titles and, you know, networking and all of that? Like, what do we do then? On the other side, we have this four of swords, one of my favorites. Fours are so much about integrating. And I know, once again, (laughs) that new moons are about like new ideas coming through. But I think this is really fascinating that the four of swords is showing up here because this for me is, you know, fours in tarot are all about points of culmination, letting something fully land. And four of swords is definitely that. This is a great time for meditation, for rest, for doing something quiet that allows information to land. I was mentioning dreaming and knowing as two kind of key words of this Taurus new moon. And I think this Four of Swords really represents that. There's a deep knowing about Four of Swords. It's like when you get quiet enough to actually hear your knowing, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's there. When I turned off the podcast, when I let myself just sit in the quiet for five minutes, just kind of be with myself. This is also a great point if you have been going through a lot energetically, if you have been integrating huge waves of energy, rest, rest, just give yourself some rest to let it integrate whatever rest looks like for you. I want to make clear that it's not a cookie cutter thing of like, go lay down. It could be rest could be doing a creative project. It could be walking. It could be sleeping. It could be any communing with somebody, having a conversation, whatever that looks like for you. Both of these, though, are acknowledging that this new moon isn't necessarily about running around trying to create everything we're dreaming up or knowing. That our job here is to be with that energy, to be with our knowing, to be with our creative dreams, and to really be present with that in order to prepare and open ourselves for movement as we keep moving through the year. So it's a kind of a reminder here that we don't have to rush to conclusions. Once again, that element of time is so important when working with Taurus energetics. So I'm going to be doing a visualization where we're going to be kind of waking the inner dreamer and creating a really safe feeling in our systems so that we can kind of just let the inner dreamer be released. So if you're looking for a little help there, like it's feeling a little... (laughs) tricky to figure out how do I dream as myself? How do I know if I'm dreaming as myself? That's going to be a really great resource. We're doing that over on my Patreon for all paid members. Um, We're also, like I mentioned, doing Journey Through the Major Arcana. If you want deeper intuitive knowing, you can also check out my series over there on intuition, which I put out last year. And it's just such a great resource if you're wanting to get back in touch with your intuition after a season of feeling maybe disconnected. Um, We also have the Magic Maker Circle where we gather twice a month on Zoom to chat about life, to feel through, and I do visualizations with the group there. So I'd love to see you in all of those spaces. You can find me on Instagram. I love it when you are here, when you subscribe, when you comment, when you like. I just love seeing what you all are feeling. How are you feeling as we move into this Taurus new moon as we move through this Taurus season? How are you feeling in comparison to what we just moved through with Pisces and Aries? I'd be really, really curious to hear. I am so thankful for this Taurus season personally, and I'm feeling really, really grateful to be in this space and to be exploring this energy with you all. I will see you all again very soon. We've got to start talking about Gemini energetics coming up and so many more good conversations ahead. I am sending you all so much love. Have a beautiful new moon in Taurus. Thank you.